Hello everybody, I'm Hujiwana and this is Space Dock. I recently played Cyberpunk 2077 and noticed that one of the smart weapons in the game functions a little oddly. The Kang Tail Smart SMGs, while they work just like every other smart weapon in game, have this funky rotating barrel that I just don't see the point of, which got me thinking about sci-fi firearms in general as many of them, while cool looking, have a bunch of just bizarre features, such as asking the audience to like and subscribe in every video. For example, last week's breakdown was of the Auriga and Betty from Alien Resurrection. There's a number of standard made-up sci-fi guns in that movie, as well as a handful of more out-there ideas, like Ron Perlman's vacuum flask gun, and the wrist gun exoskeleton thingamabob that fires rounds that can ricochet a magic number of times. The main one that caught my eye though was the Lacrima 99 shock rifle that USM personnel carry around because of its shape. It's just wrong. How on earth do the rounds get from the magazine to the barrel? Where are the sights? Why does it look so uncomfortable? What will be my next question? Who am I? It's a shame the weapons in Resurrection were so naff because of how amazing they all were in Aliens. I mean, who doesn't have a soft spot for the pulse rifle? Listen to it. It's one of the best firearms in sci-fi, from its instantly recognisable looks and sound to its use in the film. The big scene with Hicks showing Ripley how to use it isn't just an overview of the weapon, it's a key character moment as well. The gun is there, but it's really just a vehicle used to grow their relationship. There is one weird thing about the Pulse Rifle though, where exactly does that little magazine fit 95 rounds of 10mm caseless ammo? Masterchef's AR has the same problem. Now the AR is great, I prefer the BR myself though, but in Halo CE it stuffs 60 rounds of 7.62 into each mag. Maybe Chief had one of those micro TARDISes from BSG Vipers in the gun. Time travelling ammo would explain why the UNSC is still using a 1950s cartridge hundreds of years into the future. Later iterations of the AR did tame this somewhat down to a mere 36 or 32 rounds. Inflation must have hit hard after the first game. In general, Halo is pretty good with its weapons, at least the standard UNSC ones. The exception being the railgun in 4 and 5 because it does the silly gap between the rails thing I mentioned in the kinetic weapons video last month. There are some other strange things going on with the weapons of the Covenant, Banished and Forerunners, but these don't do anything too egregious beyond their weird ergonomics when humans use them, and they're all alien tech anyway. The same can also kind of be said for the weapons of Mass Effect, but those are generally less on the side of esoteric laser and plasma stuff. They are often made by non-human companies using technology that they thought was left behind by the Proteans, but they are largely still just the same throw rocks at each other sort of kinetic weapons design, just juiced up a tiny bit. The thing is, almost every gun has two barrels, in the first couple of games at least, and they all fold inside themselves in ways that hurt the brain to think about. This is only possible because, well, it's a video game and you can make models clip into each other, but if they were real, they'd all have to be rickety empty cases. I adore Mass Effect, but this aspect of its weapon design does make me wince a little when I see them. The same applies to the standard issue handgun used by protectors in Continuum, which just pops out of its own grip. I love this show, but man, that just annoys me. The future assault rifles don't seem to do that at least, and instead opting for the classic modified airsoft gun route that the Expanse and many other things also took. A much better transforming gun is the absolutely wonderful Zorg ZF-1 from the Fifth Element, because it genuinely looks like it could fold up inside of itself, almost. Despite how awesome it is though, one single weapon having every one of those functions is a bit mad, and the ergonomics and balance of the thing would likely be a bit strange. It's also absolutely bonkers that it has a self-destruct button that seems like you could accidentally push it. Who builds that into their weapons? Oh, this guy, right. While on the subject of the fifth element, can we talk about this? What is going on here? Why does it have spikes on it? And Corbin's handgun makes me scratch my head a bit too. I still adore the film though, and these odd weapons do fit right into the bright and exaggerating setting perfectly. Unfortunately, I can't say the same of Jane's Callahan full bore auto lock. This may be sacrilege, but it's kinda goofy looking, like a toy gun someone made out of a bunch of multicolored Lego blocks. And the extra ammo held in the folding stock look like they're on the verge of leaping out to freedom. It doesn't fit any of the rest of the Wild West aesthetic, basically every other firearm has going on, which may have been the point of it, but yeesh, they missed the mark there. The other standout weapons in Firefly, the Lassiter and the Laser Pistol, do look somewhat coherent at least, even if they have their own peculiarities like the Lassiter's grip. And at least they have grips, unlike the stick or staff type weapons that pop up now and then, most obviously in Stargate. Like come on, you're going to struggle to aim these things, which is fine if you're a Jafar and you exist to sow terror into a populace, but if you're not, you're gonna struggle. The Bedrosian weapon from late in Season 3 of SG-1 just looks impossible to accurately shoot, and the same goes for the Wraith spear gun that 
that these props got reused into. The Zatnikital is kind of the same as they look very top heavy, but I suppose the same terror weapon justification applies to those too, maybe? So, just why exactly do these strange weapons appear in sci-fi? I think the first answer here is the rule of cool. The transforming guns from Mass Effect and Continuum are weird, but can be seen as cool and futuristic. The sonic knockback gun from Minority Report? Well, you spin it to reload, just like the way Arnie cycles his shotgun in Terminator 2, which is just an amazingly cool way to break your fingers if you're not Austrian-American or a cyborg. Which brings me to another very common thing that happens, which is taking a real or airsoft weapon and enclosing it within a prop shell to make it look like something else. This adds some extra constraints to the design of the fake weapon, and you can end up with things like the enormously oversized pistols from Chronicles of Riddick. Even if the designers work around that problem though, sometimes things like the limousine length magazine for the endo battle rifle that scrapes against the user's arm happens. But at least those are fired by Austrian American cyborgs so they can get away with it. The real life OICW and related weapons have a similar deal with two weapons combined into one, and even look much the same. Also, hidden away inside the Endo's prop shell is one of the oddly shaped rifles from Calico. Ah, Calico, the herald of vaguely futuristic 90s space guns. With their various rifles and pistols with top-mounted helical magazines used all over the place from Star Trek to Total Recall. So it's not only fake space guns that can look weird, but real ones too. Sadly, those dropped out of favour for G36s and Chris Vectors for that vaguely futuristic look, as well as the also top-loaded gold-busting P90. The same goes for the Mateba series of revolvers, which have been a staple of the cool handgun niche ever since Togusa ripped that bad boy out in Ghost in the Shell, as they have been somewhat replaced by the Chiapa Rhino. So that's a few reasons why sci-fi weapons can look strange, but there's another reason that applies more to weapons that are made up from scratch, which is simply that the artists responsible either don't know much about guns, or it just wasn't a priority. Behind the scenes issues like deadlines, budgets, or even just wanting something overtly alien also have to be taken into consideration. Not every production team has the capability or even the desire to create turbo-authentic firearms. But when it does happen, ooh, it's fantastic. I've already provided some examples, but for me, Elysium is the go-to for cool sci-fi weapons, due to the combination of the director, Neil Blomkamp, and the legendary concept artist, Aaron Beck. It's got the modified AK which fires airburst rounds, it's got the chemrail, it's got the laser cutter, it's got the smart rifle from Aliens, uh, sort of, okay, not really, and it's got explosive shurikens. All these fun video game weapons that were thought through and well designed. Brilliant stuff. I'm going to round this all out by pointing out the exact same thing occurs with spacecraft design. There's a lot of odd ship designs out there in sci-fi, and while they could have more effort put into them or made deliberately more realistic, that is often either not possible or just not the goal of those who created it. Not every vessel and not every gun has to be a wholly authentic and possible creation. In the end, I think the worst defenders are those that are right there on the edge, in that uncanny valley where they seem realistic, but then have one feature that makes and goofy, just like that spinning barrel on one of Cyberpunk's submachine guns. Thanks for watching! If you know of any particularly egregious examples of weird and wonderful weapons, tell me about them in the comments. If you want to support the channel, you can join our Patreon and have your name up on the screen like these lovely people here, or become a channel member to be featured directly on the Space Dog page. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.